Welcome. This tutorial is about modeling with polygons. Modeling with polygons is a pretty straightforward way of creating objects uh, without the need to use splines or surfaces we create based on splines. But before we start, let's talk about some basic things. Uh, first of all, I would set the default object color to 80% gray. That's just a matter of uh, yeah, to view, to have a clear view on our topology and our object. And first, we need to know that Cinema 4D or pretty much any 3D program works with a so-called Cartesian or Cartesian coordinate system. You can see it right here in the middle. That's the center of each scene. And there is a grid on the floor. So if this distracts you, you can deactivate it by going to filter and then grid. This grid may help you to place your objects precisely or just to get a sort of relation um, on how big your objects are but I will just turn it off for now so I go to filter grid and that way I can see the null that's the very center of my scene better this axis, world axis uh, shows me three directions. The first is uh, goes to the right hand side, that's X plus. So whenever I move an object to the right side I will get an, a positive X value and when you move it to the left hand side you will get a negative X value. Let's just use a null object from the cube here, a null object and place it or yeah, it's, it's, it's placed from the start right in the center of our scene. That's the case for pretty much our, any object we create from scratch. They will all be placed in the center of our scene so it sits right on top of the world axis. So now let's have a look at the attribute manager and watch the coordinates here. If I move the object to the right, the coordinates called position X will rise. So the further I move it to the right hand side, the higher the number here. If I move it to the left hand side, the number decreases and if I go to the or if I move the object to the left from the world axis, I get a minus value, so a, a value lower than zero. So any object, any lamp, any camera has an has so-called world coordinates that tell us where this object is placed. If I want to move the object up or down, but when I move it up, I get positive y values. If I move it downwards, I will get negative y values. So when they are below the world zero, this null in the middle, then we will have a negative y value. And then the last thing I can do is move it in depth, so away from the camera in this case, then I will get a positive z value. And if I move it to the front, I will get a negative z value. So those coordinates are, in this case, showing the world values, if you like. So that's always relating to this point in the middle. So now, at the moment, these coordinates here in the attribute manager and the ones in the coordinate manager down here are the same. So there's no difference if I change the number here or if I do so here and click apply. 
that would be the same at the moment because I got the whole object selected. I can make sure that the whole object is selected by clicking on this button, Use Model Mode. So now if I would like to put this object, this null object, back to the world center, I would just type 0, tab key 0, tab key 0 in there, and hit Enter at the end, and then my null object is located right at the center. So at the moment, the object values are just the same as the world values. I can change my coordinate system down here. So I can use world values down here. And using the top keys, I can just switch between X, Y and Z, hitting enter. So now I'm 50%, uh, 50 units to the right. 50 units up and 50 units in depth. So now let's use another null. So we just pull out a copy by hitting control and moving it downwards and moving it away. There's a quicker way of doing a copy. Let me just undo this. So we delete the new null object you could as well select the first null and work right in the 3D view by holding down control key and pulling the mouse aside. So as long as you holding down control, you will get a copy. So now we have two nulls. That's the original null. I will just call it first. Then I use the arrow key down on my keyboard and hit second. So far the first object, this one here, and the second object both have coordinates relating to the world null. But when I move the second object underneath the first one you will see that the coordinates changed all of a sudden. So let me pull it out again. That's the world coordinates now. And if I put the second object as a child to the first one, then the values switch. And now we have local values. Let's see what that means. If I lower, for example, the x values towards zero, we get closer to the first object. Same with the Y value and the Z value. So to make it short, these coordinates became local now. So if I put in 0, 0, 0, my second object will be just located at the same spot as the first object. So these values no longer show me any relation to that uh, world axis, but to the local ones. So, the standard that is applied to the coordinate manager will be object relative. So, that would be the very same. But that's kind of superfluous, so what I might like better is in this case not object absolute, that would rely on the center of that object. We will talk about this just in a minute. But if we still want to have a relation to the world axis, we put world in the coordinate manager. So that way I have now two, uh, two kinds of values. I first have the local values indicating their the object's location concerning the parented object and then I have a excuse me another set of coordinates I make sure you have the second object selected 
then I have another pair of, or excuse me, another triple of coordinates that relate to the bottom, excuse me, the world null. So when I put 0, 0, 0 in my coordinate manager and have world activated, then I just need to press either enter or hit apply. And that way I can make sure that this child object called second, which is underneath in hierarchy, underneath the first object, is located at the world center. But at the same time, I can make sure or check here how it relates to the first object, which is this one. So this might seem a bit theoretical to you, but in fact that's the base of anything you will see in 3D space. So, of course, you are not only able to change values in terms of position, but you could do so by rotating. It gets applied here too. Or in terms of scale. So P stands for position, S for scale, and R for rotation. You can see that the child object always relates to this parented object. But you should be sure or you should know that it does so only relatively. So when I turn the second object solely, so uh, alone, the object on top will just um, will not be changed but it will change uh, the object just relative to that we can illustrate this better by using cubes I guess but that's just the very basic thing about world coordinates and local ones So now, how can I use this for modeling? Let me just give you another example. I just delete the two null objects and I will create a very, very basic object, which is a polygon. That polygon gets created, if I just click on polygon here, right at the center of our scene, which is the world null right in the middle and if you want to view it better even if it's unselected you should go to display grow shading lines that way you have a black border around it and you can see that this polygon object only consists of one polygon now what if we move it upwards Let's go to E for moving and move it upwards. Then you can tell you have a world coordinate here, which is maybe 25. So it's 25 units above the center. If I click on polygon, I will see the very same right here in the coordinate manager. Now, this sh doesn't work just yet, so let's discuss this later. And this polygon object is a so-called primitive, and we can change a lot of values for each of those primitives from this list. I think we discussed this in another tutorial. But we can always use those objects as a base for more complex objects. So I could, for example, change some values here before I start modeling. I just made it 150 in width and 100 that's just what I uh, the number I found here so let's just leave it to that 
and now we can convert this object to a actual polygon object so it's editable. We will do so by clicking on this icon here which changes a parametrical object or a parametric object to an, an editable one. Let's click there. The alternative would have been to uh, press the C button and how can you tell the difference between a polygon object and a parametric one? Let's just go back and then you can tell the difference the polygon object which is parametric has a blue sign in front of it. This may look differently if you select other objects but with the polygon it just looks like that and it's always blue and it only has a font tag applied so far. After clicking on the conversion button I will find a new icon here. It has white dots in the corners which means it's editable and you get an UVW tag which is not important for modeling at the moment. So now this object is editable. At first, what does an object consist of? It consists of points. So let's go to the point mode, mode here. And if you go to the live selection, you can select each single point of your object. By the way, if you import objects, you won't need to convert them. They will be already so-called polygon objects, so they should have this icon here too. So if you import stuff, for example, from other 3D programs or from CAD applications, you will not um, have to, to convert it. It will be a polygon object right from the start. But now back to the topology. A polygon object consists of points. So this is pretty much the most primitive um, example of an object. It has four points. It has, let's go to edge mode here, four edges. And those four points build up a rectangle which is just one single polygon, that one here. So again this is point mode, this is edge mode and this is the polygon mode. So how do I get this nice looking HUD this head-up display right in my interface. You should go to, there's a shortcut called Shift V or you could just use, let me have a look, Options, Configure. That way you will be able to change stuff you will see in the perspective mode. If you want to, I just used the middle mouse button to get that split view. Alternatively you could have clicked right in the corner here. If you want to see those statistics about your object in any view, you just go to view, excuse me, you go to options, configure all. Then there is an entry called HUD. That's that display here. And then you can activate anything you need. You could show the camera distance to the object, the frame time you're on, the projection, so whether you're looking from top or front, the root object, 
the total number of objects. We just have one now. And then for modeling, most important, what you want to see is total points, total edges, total polygons, and selected points, selected edges, and selected polygons. I activated n-gons as well, but I don't think we will work with n-gons much, but why not activating it? Cinema 4D only shows um, it when, when, they, when you actually use them, so you won't waste much space. I think all the other options you have here are obvious. You could also make Cinema 4D show the object's names, but I don't think that's um, necessary. I'm only interested in the modeling stuff, which is okay with activating the total and the selected options. If you want to see more statistics, then you can do so as well. If you're unsure what tool you have selected, you can do that as well. But let's just keep it down to that for now. So, what ways do we have of manipulating our polygon object, which we just converted? First, we can move each point around. The only thing you have to do is go to point mode make sure the object is converted and then you go to live selection you select one one point and you can move it around in any direction you want if you want to make sure you just move it in one direction you just take the left mouse button and hover over that arrows if you want to work more freely you can just make sure that point is selected and just hold down the left mouse button just somewhere just anywhere in this gray area hold it down excuse me select it go to the move tool or just hit E and then hold down the mouse button somewhere in the gray and just move your mouse around so this is not a precise movement as long as you are in perspective mode but it works quite fine if you for example look from top that way this point will not go up and down as you can see if you look at the coordinates down here it will just change in x direction if I move it here and z if I move it like this so I quite often use those split view just to get precise movements which do not influence all three dimensions at once. If you want to select more than one point at a time just hold down shift and click on the other points. You can do so either if the move tool or any other tool like scaling or rotating is activated or to make sure you can switch to live selection mode and then select each point. So now if I want to have more than one I hold down shift. If I want to remove a selected point you hold down control and move over it as well so that way it will be deselected. If I want to select all points, I just hit Command A or Control A if you're using Windows and then I have all the points selected and I could all move them at once. I could also use two points and just move them up or down. Now you might have noticed that this axis tool is moving every time I change my selection and that's because this center tool is always positioned or placed at the center of our selected points. If you want to change its position 
you can go to modeling access and there will be plenty of op uh, options for you. You could, for example, move it to the very right of your selection or the top or the deepest point in, in space just using X, Y and Z. If I want to clear those that option, which I would recommend for now, I will put them back to zero. But just to make this clear, say I want to have a selection on the bottom, I can go down with the Y value so it sits right on the same height as the lowest point. And now I could use scale and scale from this position upwards so the bottom point stays fixed in this case. If I want to do the opposite, like coming from top, I would just place this Y value on top and now I can do the scaling again like so. So that way this top point stays fixed. Okay, back to zero for normal behavior. Of course you can change the orientation of the axis by the world coordinates, then that for example scaling or moving would have its origin from the world axis. You can use the object axis, we will talk about this in a second, and many many more. Please make sure for this tutorial you have axis selected activated and you could also change the orientation this axis tool has. For example, you could use the normal so then it takes the 90 degrees angle to that surface. And you should just find your way through that by experimenting. So now before we go into more detail, let's make one thing sure. If you go back to use model mode, this one here, you will see that the center of your object may be just right where you created that object or where you moved it to. So at the moment, this point here in space is the axis of that whole polygon object here. So at the moment, it's a bit confusing because this axis point is not anyhow related to those other points. So if I know if I know for sure that I that my model has a base, why not moving this axis to a certain point of my object? You can do so by enabling this axis modification. You can use that use L for this. It's easy to keep in mind because it looks like an L letter, so just go to L and then you can move that axis around without changing the geometry and you can place it wherever you want. You can even use numbers for this so you could just place it to say 10 by 10 by 10, hit enter and then this axis is located at a certain point in the world coordinates. When you want to get on the polygon or working on the polygon again, make sure to click on enable access modification again to disable it so it should always in the end look like this so when I use that very same axis again this time I'm moving the whole object starting from here if you want to snap a point on your modified object you could just go to P for snapping use that grid up here, that, that kind of dotted line 
and then you could just use the access tool again hit enable snapping you don't need point mode it, it doesn't matter and use 3d snapping instead of 2 5d snapping and make sure you activate point snapping so now if you have this access modification tool activated so it's highlighted then you can just move that axis by pressing E or going to the move tool and move it there until it snaps to that point or that whatever you like so it snaps. After you did some operation using snapping you should disable it again so that way you can make sure excuse me you should and disable the X modification just as well and then you can move your object around and when you place the objects make sure this one is activated the use model um, tool and you have the objects access selected then you can put all the positions to zero for example and that way you can be absolutely sure that this point of my geometry sits right on the world's axis. So now let's go more into depth. Make sure the object is selected just by having the live selection and the use model mode selected and click on the object. So this should be highlighted in, in white letters and you should get a bounding box this access tool and the object will be surrounded by white lines by the way if you ever find that this axis those arrows here are in your way just hit, hit alt D on your keyboard to make it invisible and press alt D to make it visible again So now let's just have a look at the points. The difference between the coordinates in the attribute manager and the coordinates of the coordinate manager is that the coordinate manager always shows me the selection I've done so the so I can see the the coordinates um of each point and the coordinates here in the attributes manager only show the coordinates of the whole thing so if I move for example the Y value in the attribute manager the whole object moves if I have a point selected and I change its value in the coordinate manager like 50 and hit enter then only the selected point or points will change. The position and the orientation of the whole object will stay the same. So that this would be the same as if I had the whole thing selected with the use model mode. Then those values might be the same as long as my object is not a child of any other. And if I'm, for example, in point mode, I can see the coordinates of each point. Now what happens if I have more than one point selected? It will show me the middle position, like the centered position of all selected points. So that way I can change a value, hit enter, and the relation those objects have to to each other will remain but the height will change as we have more points selected now let's just go over to scaling of course this center will be used for scaling points up and down and this center will be used for rotating stuff around 
So now in combination with that modeling axis, I can use lots of um, other coordinates or yeah, points in, in, in space for my operations like scaling or rotating. So now one more thing, if you want to place a number of points on the same height, you can do so by just checking the size value. The size will show you that there's a difference in height by, in my case, 23 units. So if you just place a zero in there and hit enter, they are on the same height coordinate, which is 90 and 90 in this case. By the way, the, the snapping can be activated and deactivated here as well. Now, is there any more options you have with points? There is. If you just have a look at the structure manager, then you can see how many points you have. And you can see each coordinate in our Cartesian coordinate system, like an X value, Y and Z value. You could type in here if you wanted and change each um, each point or its coordinate by hand. Of course you can change the mode from point to polygon so it tells you there's one polygon. I could just go to polygon mode so it's selected and it basically tells me what what points it's using. So it's using point 0, 1, 2 and 3. So in point mode this would be the guys 0, 1, 2 and 3. And then I have angled mode and different other modes we will not care about. But this here is a good way of, of showing the whole thing at once. And you can even copy paste coordinates like this one from here by dragging and dropping it over to another position. If you want to have a, a new point for example you would just pull that point down holding down control and then you will have another point there. Let me just take this point and there you go I added a new point so now we have five in total to my um, to my geometry and in polygon mode um, I I would need another point now which which um, is connected with uh, with that fifth element but um, let me just replace this by going to four and then this point is not used any longer but instead it's this one now. You can use the structure manager for importing text files as well and Cinema 4D will try to read that. The standard way would be to go to File Merge though. That way you could import objects. Let's go back to the object manager and have a look at other options we have because there's an edge mode as well. You can select single edges or multiple ones by just stroking with the left mouse button over more edges. The same works for points. And I will just put the modeling access tool to same values again, zero, zero, zero. And now you might have seen that when I hold down the left mouse button, I get a little circle around my mouse. And this circle shows 
the the size of the selection tool. So while holding down the left mouse button, you can use your scroll wheel on your mouse to make the radius smaller or bigger. So for really precise work, you can use a really tiny circle. And if you are sure what you're doing, well, when you have a really rough geometry, then you can use a really fat brush. If you go to Options, after having selected the Live Selection tool, there is that same option again. You can see the radius changing. And then there's two more interesting things. The first one is only select visible elements. Now this means if you have a geometry that occludes some points, they would normally be not selected. So if only select visible elements is activated, it works like this. Just take a cube and let's convert that cube by clicking here. And let's go to point mode. And now we'll find out the difference between only select visible elements or not. When I move over those points with a really, really fat brush, so scroll up, then only those three points will be selected, but not the points on the back side or this point at the back side. If I disable only select visible elements, it happens that the back sides of objects will be selected as well. So that's why I'm using that selected and total um, display here to make sure if I, if I want to be sure that I just selected two points, I can always double check not by only looking around on my objects, but if I see I just selected two points here, then I can just look here and see, okay, there's no three. If there would be points three selected, then that would mean that I have taken that point on the back side by mistake. So you should always make sure that your selection worked and that you have nothing like this happening, like the back point. It, it, maybe you do this on purpose, but in most cases this happens by mistake. So you should always enable this only select visible elements um, in, in many cases. It's different if you're using orthogonal views like top view, then it's fairly easy. If I look from the top and just hover over those two points, I can see, okay, I selected two points. If I want to select the bottom ones at the same time, I just disable only select visible elements and I just hover over that points again and now I have all four points selected and then I could, for example, move them. That would be only select visible elements. Now in edge mode, there's another mode which is called tolerant edge polygon selection. The normal behavior is you hover over an edge and it gets selected. Even the back sides get selected now because I didn't uh, enable only select visible elements. So let's do it again. Now only the guys in the foreground <coughs> are selected. Now what's the difference between tolerant edge and yeah, selection and not tolerant? If I have tolerant edge select um, activated then it's enough to just slightly touch that polygon like this and it will be activated or selected. If I have not enabled tolerant edge selection nothing happens if I just um, hover over it, I need to have the whole thing touched, like I need to go over a major 
um, area of that edge or point. And this is sometimes quite useful, especially in conjunction with the rectangle selection tool. So if I want to have just tiny bits, like tiny strokes to get my edges, then the tolerance selection should be activated so I can just do tiny bits like this and the edge is selected. If I want the top and bottom edge then I will just um, deactivate only select visible elements and I will do this the same uh, just like again and then I have top and bottom selected. So why would I use tolerant selection and not just imagine you have a more complex geometry and you really have the lines really densely packed so it's getting harder and harder to precisely select stuff then tolerant selection might help you or the opposite deactivating tolerant selection might make sure that you're not selecting too many lines by mistake So for the edges, um, it's the same. I could just um, select, for example, one edge tolerantly and change either its position, like this, or even its size. So that way I can see the size is 200 units. 200 means the distance from here to there in this case so now when I put in a 100 then it's got half the size pretty useful for modeling some kind of objects now if I wanted to pull this one further out I would just go to model axis and change the orientation for example to object and then I could just pull it out so with those modeling tools or this simple way of modeling you should be able to to get pretty many shapes done okay that's the edge mode there is no representation oh yeah there is in in um in structure so you can see all the edges and you can also see, let's have a look. No, I was right, there is just points and polygons, so the edges are not listed, so you cannot see what um, edge, the uh, what points the edges are using, I guess. Anyway, let's go back to object mode. And then and there's another mode which is the polygon mode. So I can click on each polygon making sure the object is selected, the selection tool is on and then I cl can click on polygons. There should be po a tolerant polygon selection activated. It's much easier in my case to just click on a polygon and then I can move it around. So for example based on a cube I can do pretty much anything I want with the combination of changing the polygons, the edges and the points.